Okay, here we're going to look at some extension problems associated with static friction. A block resting on a plank has a coefficient of 0 0.4. Determine the maximum angle the plank can be inclined to before the object starts moving. So here's our incline. Here is our object. We don't know its mass. We've seen in these other extension videos, though, that often the mass will cancel out in these types of situations, so we're not too worried about it. The normal force we know goes straight out of the incline. The force of gravity remains straight down. And here we have an unknown angle. This force of gravity can be divided into two components. And if this is theta, this is 90 minus theta, and this is theta. So this part, well, the gravity will be 9.8 m. So this is my adjacent side, so it's going to the force of gravity that is perpendicular to the plane is going to be 9.8 cos theta, 9.8 m cos theta. And the parallel component of the force of gravity, or the one that points down the plane, is going to be Fg parallel 9.8 m sine theta. Now, as discussed in the inclined plane video, this section of the force of gravity and this normal force are the two that are like the force of gravity and normal force that cancel out and have no effect on the motion. But what that means then is that our normal force has a value of 9.8 m cos theta. So if this part of gravity is trying to pull the, pull the object down the plane, the force that's resisting that is the force of friction here. And so if this object and this object just before this object starts to move down the plane are cancelling each other out, then the value of this force of friction must also be 9.m, but this time sine theta, as this and this can be viewed as a pair that are cancelling each other out, and this and this can be viewed as a pair that are cancelling each other out. With that in mind then, I can go to the overall force of friction formula, FF equals UFN and substitute what I know, my expressions for each, and 9.8 sine theta equals mu 9.8 m cos theta. Mass can equal zero, so I can happily cancel him out on both sides. I can cancel the 9.8 out on either side, and I get that sine theta equals mu cos theta. If I divide both sides by cos theta, then I get mu equals tan theta, recognizing that sine over cos is tan. If you haven't done that in math yet, remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and cos is opposite or adjacent over hypotenuse. So if we simplify those two ratios, it's opposite over adjacent, the two hypotenuses cancelling out, which is tan. Anyway, so 0 0.4 equals tan theta, because we said in our question that the coefficient of friction is 0 0.4. And if I inverse tan both sides, I get 21.8 degrees. So that's the biggest incline I can set up here before this object's going to start to move. But this expression is a general expression regardless of which question you're looking at. Another extension problem here. In the system drawn below, determine the range of hanging masses that will allow the system to remain stationary. So here what we have is we have a 5 kilogram object that's resting on an incline with a coefficient of 0.2. Um, so if we have that 5 kilogram object and we consider all the forces acting on them, there's a force of gravity going down and we can break that force of gravity into components. First of all, it's 9.8 newtons per kilogram times 5. So it works up to negative 49 newtons. There's a force of tension pulling them up there's going to be a normal force from the incline and then there's going to be a force of friction. But the question here 
is does the force of friction pull up like that to keep the five kilogram object from sliding down, or does the force of friction go like that to keep the hanging mass from sliding down or to keep the object from moving up the incline? And the answer is, that's why we have a range of hanging masses. The force of friction can be in either direction, and the range of masses in between those two directions are the range of masses that will allow this system to remain stationary. Let's first deal with the situation, well, let's first get these exact values. Um, the angle here is 30 degrees. So 49, negative 49 newtons, sine 30 works out to negative 24.5 newtons. Um, we don't know what the force of tension is, but we do know it in terms of m. It's going to be equal to negative 9.8 m. See, if this is negative 9.8 m pulling this down on the force of gravity, then the force of tension that must be pulling back up to keep this from moving is equal to 9.8 m. Sorry, not negative, just 9.8 m. Uh, 49 cos 30, I'll grab my calculator here, works out to 42.4. And if that's the gravitational force going down into the plane, then the normal force is balancing that at 42.4 newtons. And again, as I discussed before, mm, I don't know what, um, which way my force of friction is, but if I have a normal force and I have a coefficient of friction, then I can calculate its magnitude at least. Mu Fn, which works out to 0 0.2, times that normal force, which worked out to 42.4, or 8.49 newtons. So, this force and this force cancel each other out. This force is pulling up, this force is pulling down, and this force could be pulling in either direction. What I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw my diagram to make it a little bit simpler. I flattened out my incline, so I've rotated everything this way by 30 degrees. And so what that means is now my force of gravity down the plane of that negative 24.5 is facing this direction. 9.8 m is pulling up in this direction. And again, I've left my force of friction off. I'm going to do case one, where m is small. That means the hanging mass is small. And so the force of friction is going to go to the left to try and keep the 20, or sorry, to the right to try and keep the 24.5 newtons from pulling the 5 kilograms down the plane. And here, if this object is going to remain stationary, that means my net force has to add to zero, which means 24.5 newtons negative plus 8.49 newtons plus 9.8 m is going to add to zero. And so I can go 24.5 minus 16.5. Is equal to 9.8 m, dividing both sides by 9.8. I would get a hanging mass of 1.63 kilograms. Or case two, where the hanging mass is sufficiently large so that instead of this 5 kilogram object trying to slide down the plane, this mass is going to pull the whole thing this way. And as a result, that force of friction is going to go and resist that motion. And here it's a negative as it's gone into the negative direction. To keep the object from moving, I'll go with a net force of zero.
And we can see effectively what happens here is that instead of that 8.49 working against the 24.5, now it's working with it to try and keep that 5 kilogram object from being pulled up. Dividing both sides by 9.8. Three point three six, three point three seven. So what does that mean? Well, if the mass hanging here is very light, then the five kilogram tries to go down. The force of friction resists it from pulling down, and the, any mass above one point six three kilograms will be enough to keep the five kilogram from falling down the incline. Alternatively, sorry, any mass greater than one point six three kilograms. Alternatively, if that mass gets too big, it's going to pull that 5 kilogram up. So if I imagine the force of friction working with the gravity going on 5 kilograms, it can resist a mass up to 3.37 kilograms, which means if the mass is greater than 1.63 kilograms and less than 3.37 kilograms, the uh, system will be stationary. So there's just a couple different static friction problems to extend our thinking on these ideas.